Don't let decision making become a game of chance. With eMarketer Pro Plus, gain exclusive access to marketing insights and data analytics designed to fuel your strategic moves. Discover how our data-centric forecasts and rigorous analysis can transform your approach and fast-track your success. Visit insiderintelligence.com slash pro dash plus to learn more. Hello, listeners. Today is Wednesday, March 13th. Welcome to Behind the Numbers, Reimagining Retail, an eMarketer podcast. This is the show where we talk about how retail collides with every part of our lives. I'm your host, Sarah Lebo. Today, we are discussing all things Walmart. Joining me to talk all things Walmart is senior analyst Zach Stambor. Hey, Zach. Hey, Sarah. Also with us to talk Walmart is senior director of content for our media team, Becky Schilling. Hello, Becky. Hello. It is Walmart Day. I am ready. We're ready. We're all ready. Before we do Walmart Day, let's get started with free sample. our Did You Know segment where I share a fun fact, a tidbit, or a question. This one's coming at you from our eMarketer daily newsletter, so if you're subscribed to that newsletter, maybe you have an advantage here. That's my shameless plug. So Nike created a new out-of-home campaign recently, which reads, it was never a long shot and shows a record-breaking female athlete. Which athlete is this? Do either of you know? It's got to be Caitlin Clark, right? Yeah, it's Caitlin Clark. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> it is University of Iowa point guard Caitlin Clark who shattered both the men's and women's Division One NCAA scoring record for basketball. Nike gave her a billboard. I actually don't really know how her compensation works for that with like name, image, likeness rules. Something to look into. But yeah, pretty cool that she got a billboard. Okay, now it's time for our next segment. Retell me this, retell me that where we discuss an interesting retail topic. And today's topic is Walmart. Walmart posted earnings a few weeks ago. They looked pretty good. Zach, can you give us a quick rundown of these earnings? Yeah, sure. Basically, no matter how you look at it, it was pretty much good all around. Walmart gained market share in virtually every category. Same store sales were up 4%. Global e-commerce sales were up 23%. In Q4, U.S. e-commerce sales were up 17%. Revenue rose almost 6%. So just all around Walmart's value proposition of value and convenience is really delivering for the retailer. Yeah, really impressive, especially we recently had Target earnings. They didn't look as great. So Walmart's definitely doing something right. And let's talk about what that something right is. Starting off with a more recent announcement that Walmart is buying Vizio, the connected TV manufacturer. This makes a ton of sense to me because of the retail media ad potential. Zach, this is something you kind of predicted before on the podcast, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I didn't quite nail it, but in, I think it was 2022, it was around the time of the Albertsons Kroger merger news. I predicted that Walmart would buy Roku and they would buy Roku to really make a play, a big play into CTV. And that's what Walmart is doing here. And they're doing it with a value oriented play. It's probably about a quarter of what they would have to spend to buy Roku. Yeah, and it makes sense, right? Retail media is exploding. The CTV growth within retail media is growing very fast. Walmart is a distant second to Amazon in retail media ad revenues, but we forecast Walmart's going to grow the most this year at 40%. Now, our forecast did come out before the Vizio acquisition, so it's going to be interesting to see when we reforecast just what we think how much that could boost Walmart's retail media, but it makes a ton of sense for them to do this partnership. We know that shoppable media is something that people are very interested in. And the path to purchase last July, the number one retail media that ad agency professionals worldwide said would be the next frontier was shoppable video content. So it makes perfect sense in so many reasons for this acquisition to happen. I mean, Vizio also has a goldmine of consumer data and consumer attention. They're physically the screens in people's houses that they didn't necessarily have the tools to 
I don't know, turn into a gold mine, right? Like Vizio had all this stuff that they they almost didn't even know what they had. So selling to Walmart, who is set up to use that first party consumer data, retail media data, makes a sense to me from Vizio's perspective also. And then in addition, you have like the in-store value as well. Walmart has long had uh, screens in their stores with ads on them. And this is just like another leg up in that area. I think that's right. I think this unlocks value out of Vizio that Vizio couldn't do on its own. I think, you know, it's interesting that they're spending $2.3 billion for a manufacturer, but this really is all about the software. And Walmart has the tools to unlock the value and, and create something that it really couldn't do at this scale on its own and do it much faster than it could, even if it attempted to do so. Yeah. And it's something that we're going to see a lot from other retailers as well. I mean, Pam Zucker from the IAB told me a few weeks ago that the value of retail media, it's not like the media platform so much as the retail data. So yeah, I mean, this makes sense. Looking specifically at the store, because that's like Walmart's bread and butter is the store. As other stores are cutting back, Walmart is expanding. Why is store footprint so important to Walmart? I mean, it always has been from the very beginning, right? They knew that they needed a large footprint. They've built their backs off of that. They built their business off of it. And every other hub and spoke happens through there. We can't discount Walmart's distribution and its prowess in its distribution and its stores are the reason why it can really do that. And it's the whole omni-channel shopper. People, you can't forget that 80% of retail sales are happening in brick and mortar. And Walmart really thrives in getting people into their stores. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, Walmart just continues to take an approach that's actually very similar to Target's approach of leaning into its stores to fulfill its e-commerce orders. Its grocery delivery business is thriving. That is also reliant upon the stores. And also the other piece to go back to advertising is one of the next big opportunities within retail media is in-store retail media. And the stores are the medium to grow that business. Yeah, the stores are the media channel there. Exactly. Yeah, you mentioned grocery. Grocery is a big deal for Walmart in a way that it I don't want to say that it isn't for Target, but definitely in a way that Target is probably jealous of. I think you can say that. <laughs> I, I, I think it's fair to say that. I mean, Walmart is essentially a grocery store that sells other stuff, whereas Target is a mass merchant that happens to have a grocery business. So they're, they're kind of different in that respect. Yeah, they have a good grocery business, right? Like it's a sizable portion. It's a good e-commerce driver for them. And to go back to why the stores are so important is because click and collect is really where a lot of the e-commerce grocery is going, is the growth is coming from, and you have to have stores for that. So Walmart has really positioned itself well to be able to capitalize on that growing click and collect. Well, and Walmart's always had a, a great grocery business. It is over half of Walmart's U.S. sales. And over the past few years, as grocery prices soared, they were just able to grab more and more share. And they're grabbing more and more share from higher income people as the price of things like eggs and what else? What other prices? Are Everything. Eggs? Milk. Eggs stuff. and milk and just about <laughs> everything else rose. Um, and now, even as inflation for groceries is relatively flat, people have solidified their habits. Habits are hard to break and people are now accustomed to buying from Walmart or grocery shopping at Walmart, particularly if they shelled out for a Walmart Plus subscription and have been getting grocery delivery because that's just like a super convenient, good value option. Yeah, I mean, I can see the whole system there, right? Like a parent who gets grocery delivery or gets click and collect, maybe higher income shopper is looking to Walmart now for that value. What's interesting about Walmart attracting upper income shoppers is that like, whether it's real or not, that's sort of like what Target's niche was. I mean, Target has always kind of called itself Target, right? Like there's this joke of that. It's like the cheap place that upper income people go. It's like fancy Walmart. Can Walmart become fancy Walmart? 
I don't know. I, I think they're different. I, I think Walmart is a place for unsexy staples, mm. you know, maybe undershirts in terms of general merchandise rather than like a uh, Diane von Furstenberg dress. So it's like, it's not quite the same stuff. Target is all about discretionary, non-essential spending, whereas Walmart thrives on just the basics. So while they may not be able to like hone in on Target's bread and butter, it is very true that higher income people are spending more of their money at Walmart. Two thirds of the retailers market share gains in the general merchandise category came from households making over a hundred thousand dollars in Q4. And I think that's largely because of Walmart Plus and just getting those higher income people into the Walmart ecosystem. And when they're buying groceries, they're also going to buy a t-shirt or whatever the other stuff the is. Pink some sweatshirt, office supplies. Yeah. Yeah. Walmart has always been the place where you can get what you need done. And it doesn't need to be in a sexy way, but you know that mm. anything that you need, you can get there. It helps you live your life easier and better and not at a breaking price point. And I think that that's something that consumers in the last 12 months in particular have really flocked to. I don't think that Target is the competitor that Walmart needs to keep an eye on. I think they need to keep an eye on those discounters in the grocery space. Mm. Aldi in particular, they just went through a big growth spurt and they announced recently that they're going to go through another $9 billion expansion plan and add another 800 stores here in the U.S. The dollar stores are expanding vastly and people are shopping more for grocery at the dollar places. I think that it's not Target where Walmart needs to look to in the grocery space, but it's the Aldi's, the discounters, because as Zach pointed out, consumers have shifted their patterns and their behaviors. And if they've gone into a particular type of retailer, are they going to be staying there? Or are they going to move somewhere else? That's a great point. I think that also transitions us into our second half where we have some room for predictions. Now it's time for our next segment, Walmart predictions Shark Tank style. How will this work? Each of us are going to share a prediction related to what Walmart might do in the coming few months and years. You'll have about 30 seconds to pitch the rest of us on your prediction. And then in true Shark Tank style, the rest of us will debate and decide whether or not we're convinced enough to invest in that prediction. Zach, why don't you go first? Okay, so this is not the hottest pr or spiciest prediction, but... That's okay. This isn't our spicy predictions. Segment, yeah. So you're good. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But I think Walmart's going to broaden the suite of services it offers under Walmart Plus. So Target... Next month plans to launch a new membership service, Target Circle 360, which for Target Circle credit card holders will be like about half the price of Walmart Plus. And Walmart Plus also obviously competes with Amazon Prime, which Amazon has long claimed is the best value in the history of shopping. And it, Amazon Prime does offer just about like everything in the world from fast free shipping to video and music streaming services to photo storage to discounts at Whole Foods. And so while Walmart Plus offers some bells and whistles in addition to free delivery, I think there's a lot of room for it to expand the breadth of perks to entice people to sign up and to stay enrolled. I definitely think you're right. I am sort of curious about what those perks might look like. I, what I'm saying is I'm investing in this prediction, but uh, yeah, I'm wondering what the specific perks would look like. Amazon has a full media channel, a full streaming platform. Walmart, I don't think, is going to start making content anytime soon. They can offer bundles with streaming platforms. They do. So I, I guess I'm just sort of curious what those offerings might look like. But I'm investing. You have my investment. Fair enough. Yeah, I think they don't need to do what Amazon is doing right now. I think they need to find their own specific areas to lean into. And they already do that to one extent with gas discount. And I think like those types of perks that appeal to value oriented consumers, it might just be a discount um, at the store or some other sort of thing like that are ways to get people, to get them to pay roughly $100 a year for. 
Becky, are you investing in this prediction? Yes, I invest in anything that is Walmart, though this is not investment advice. But I do. I think (laughs) Walmart has seen really great success with their subscription program. And why not lean into the thing that's working for you, especially when you just made this huge acquisition for Vizio? And I think there's a lot of tie-ins that you can make there. Cool. Zach, you have one over the sharks. Awesome. Becky, what is your pitch? We'll call it a pitch. What What is is my pitch? I had a lot of struggle with this because a lot of the things that I thought Walmart could lean into, Walmart's leaning into. Huge fan of Walmart for anyone who cannot tell at this point in the podcast already. But what I thought was that Walmart is going to lean even more into the pet industry and forge a partnership with Chewy. Now, let me explain. Walmart opened their veterinary and grooming space in a store outside of Atlanta last September. Market share, we know that people spend a lot on their pets. Again, going back to Walmart offering a lot of services that are beyond just your typical grocery or mass merchant. I got my first pair of glasses at a Walmart. You can do all kinds of banking at Walmart. They have so many functionalities. And I think bringing in the pet care, not just in the retail aspect, but in the vet grooming and the veterinarian care is really smart. And I think that they could forge a partnership with Chewy. I don't think Chewy's going away. I think it's a really great name, but I think the brick and mortar play between the two of them working together could be very interesting. Zach, are you investing in Walmart partnering with Chewy? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. As Walmart expands its store count, it's leaning into larger stores. There's plenty of space for this sort of offering. And it's just another way to get people into the stores, which once you're in the store, you might as well pick up your own groceries as well as a slew of other stuff. So I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Becky, you and I were just talking this morning about how people spend any amount of money on their pets. By people, I mean uh, Becky Schilling. No, but uh, people will spend any amount of money on their pets. Uh, being involved with a pet company makes a lot of sense. Chewy in particular, like I, I don't have the ins and outs of Chewy's business in front of me right now, but they're a D to C that's grown a lot that needs to find other places to grow. And so partnerships are a great way it can do that. Okay, so Becky, you've won over the sharks. I'll make my pitch now. My pitch is that Walmart will open up a smaller format store for grocery targeted at higher income people. This is like the Whole Foods of Walmart. I'm calling it Walmart because that's the first thing I came up with and then I didn't want to come up with any other names and it seemed cute. But like Becky, your Texas native HEB has this with Central Market. I guess they're not small format. They're the opposite of small format. But a higher end grocery store to really capitalize on those people that are willing to spend more. This is like the Whole Foods of Walmart. Are you guys investing in this? I'm afraid I am going to pass. I think Walmart has struggled to, I would assume these would be located in like urban areas or near urban areas because that's largely where higher income people live. Is that right? Yeah, maybe. Probably. (laughs) Yeah, I think so. Walmart's really struggled to figure out like what resonates with those consumers in those areas. They've opened their own grocery stores in that space. They bought Jet because they thought that those consumers didn't like the Walmart brand. So your Walmart name might not appeal to those people as well. I just don't think Walmart really gets the urban consumer in a way that would make it work. It is true we don't have any Walmart in New York City, which is kind of a miss. Becky, are you investing in this prediction? Sadly, no. I don't think that Walmart needs to do it. They've gotten the high-income shopper to come into their stores or to shop with them online or through a click and collect. I don't think that's a passing fad. I think as long as consumers are feeling a pinch economically and they've come in, I think that they're going to stay. I think that they realize the wonder of Walmart. And by that, I mean that you can get everything that you need in one place, in one shop without having to bust your bank account, I think they're going to stay. I don't think there's any need for Walmart to expand in that direction with those types of stores. Okay. So we have Walmart offering new 
opportunities with its Walmart Plus membership. I almost called it a Prime membership, which I think really goes to show you how strong Amazon's branding is. But we have Walmart offering more with its Walmart Plus membership. We have Walmart partnering with Chewy and doubling down on pets. And we do not have Walmart expanding into a smaller format, a high-end grocery. That's where we're at with Walmart for today. So thank you for joining me, Becky. Thanks for having me. And thank you, Zach. Yeah, thanks. It's been fun. Please give us a rating and review wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you to our listeners and to Victoria, who edits the podcast. We'll be back next Wednesday with another episode of Reimagining Retail, an eMarketer podcast. And join Marcus for another episode of the Behind the Numbers Daily. Come, come, come.